I'm glad you mentioned some of the challenges that you face getting into your career and, you know, you know, not everybody gets straight A's in school and, but there's still a pathway path forward. What, I mean, what would you tell students who are, are seeing the same kind of pushback from saying, well, your grades aren't that good or, you know, studying the, studying the floor of the ocean is just too unrealistic, you know, just get a real job. Um, yeah. what, would you t- what would you tell them? And how would you, what was a, a piece of yeah. advice that you would give them? Yeah. I hear a couple things. One, I work with a team of people that, uh, um, almost every expedition. Well, first of all, when you see someone in front of the microphone or a TV camera after an expedition, that's usually not the star of the show. You know, it's, I've been had that privilege many times to represent people, but it's usually people that you never hear their name that's really the star behind the scenes. And they're everything from carpenters and electricians and technicians to scientists. Um, you know, I could say the old thing, never let anyone take your dreams away. Always keep your dreams and stuff. That's true. I mean, everyone I work with has had a really tough time in school. Uh, same kind of thing. Couldn't read, couldn't take notes, uh, disturbed others, uh, ADD-ish and more. Uh, and yet, so what we learn to do is to cope with it, find coping mechanisms. You have more help today. Ah, Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's one of the important things. Uh, as weird and uncomfortable as it may be, I think you'll find that people will respond to you and things you worry every day about, every day about that make you crazy, give you anxiety, can go away like that because you know you've got other people on your side. So that's one thing I learned. Uh, Second thing is, and you find it hard to believe it coming from me here, Blavin, learn to listen. You know, as your mouth is moving and stuff's coming out, stuff can't get in. So learn to listen what people say, uh, respect other views, because, you know, I've been wrong, I think, more than I've been right. Not that I go run around saying, yeah, you're wrong, but things that I thought, I go, hmm, I was wrong about that. And uh, so all these things, you shouldn't be afraid, like sports, think of it like sports, right? Um, It's not easy, because to get on the playground or on the big field, You've got to do all the things, the push-ups, the sit-ups, the stuff that I don't want to do that stuff. I just want to go here and be, well, you know, you've got to have the talent. You've got to have the passion, but you also have to have the uh, foundation. And uh, I'm not saying you've got to be a straight student at all. In fact, I don't know any straight-A students uh, uh, in, in the people I work with. There are a bunch. I just had in my group. I don't see them. Uh but, you know, I, I used to play tennis a lot and people and did pretty well. And people would say, wow, you're really passionate about that and uh, you're really good. But I would only get so far in every tournament. And then someone with training uh, would just take me to pieces because they had that foundation. So I learned, you know, passion's great. It'll get you so far. But at some point, you've got to have be able to fall back on a, on a real important background. But. You know, be if you play video games, and I'm sure some of you do, um, you know what it's like to level up, and the, you know the excitement that you get from uh, sticking. You know, it's you know, seeing it through and playing and playing and make mistakes, and you try. You talk to your friends, you read, and and eventually you level up and up and up and up. I'm not saying just play video games, but it's that same kind of passion that you want to know more and learn more and do more and et cetera, et cetera. And just keep on, think of it as like that, a challenge. It's a challenge. Think of it like uh, you're doing something, you're dreaming things that have never been dreamt before. You're asking questions that have never been asked before. And you'll be seeing things that you're probably the only person to ever see it and probably maybe the last person to ever see it on the planet. So it's a world of excitement. It's tough. It should be tough. Um, but it's pretty cool, you know. I just, just don't turn off that passion because you find it, you know, don't be a wimp, you know, just because someone roughed you up a little bit. Uh, and that's a great filter, you know. It's a great filter. If I can say, oh, you're terrible and your work is terrible and that's horrible and you go away, you know, what kind of pr- – no, don't do that. You know, be have some pride, have some integrity, always learn to respect and always learn to be – I said once to a person – we have to be more tolerant. And she said to me, who was Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright of the United States. And I said, you know, we need to be more tolerant. She said, no, you need to be more accepting. I said, all right, I get it. So you have to learn to be that too. So sorry, that's a whole bunch of, that's classic ADD, blab, a tsunami of words. 
that came out. But uh, get excited, you know. I mean, it's great, great. And start now. Don't say, oh, next week I'll get excited. Start now. Just And be the best. You know, just keep your sights on why not be the best at what you do. And even if it's not the tallest mountain, find your own little peak and be the best of that little peak. And I always tell people that, too. You, you get a sp- If you're the best at this tiny little thing that you do, you'll get a seat at the same table as these people up here. You really will. So. That's great advice and, um, you know, something we could all probably learn from, you know, even if we're not going into oceanography. Um, sp- speaking specifically of oceanography, you know, what somebody's say there's a student who is, you know, in school, that's their path, that's their passion, they're, they're going to be studying it. What are, what are some best ways to translate, you know, studying, studying it? and translate that into a career and where, and what, and what pathways are there, are, you know, are there a lot of careers in this, in this path um, for, for students to get into? Sure. Yeah. Uh, one thing I can tell you is that I think the field is really getting more and more important because, and I wouldn't have said that 20 years ago or 30 years ago, I, you know, I made it more important for myself, but uh, it was tough to find funding and the like, but I mean, the planet's in pretty serious shape. You know, it's uh, it's not a matter of it's beyond the point of no return. It's beyond a matter of what kind of a future do we want. And we don't want to have unintended consequences and we want to do the right thing. So to do that, you need to know, like a doctor or a dentist, you need to know what you're talking about. You know, it's not just like uh, have the surgery or uh, fill a, have a root canal. You know, you really need to know what you're talking about. And so the people... We need a lot more people. Every city, most cities in the world are built along the coast. Every one of them is a municipality in a way that's going to need a lot of people to understand the impact of humans on the water and the impact of water on the humans. Um, exploration right now is like, you know, and there's a couple of ships in the United States, three, maybe four, uh, then for the deep ocean. There's a, for the whole planet, there might be a half dozen ships out there doing research. Oh, that's just not enough. And now we're in the age of robots, too, where you can sit wherever you're sitting right now with a joystick, with a headset, and drive around the deep ocean uh, virtually. And uh, so I think that the opportunities are getting more and more as people start to realize that they can, uh, that A, they're important, and B, you know, there's a lot of jobs in that world uh, out there to be had by knowing, having knowledge of what to do in the uh, in the deep ocean. So. Yeah. And, you know, again, I, it's important. I know a lot of people, I do know students that show up with a straight A, 4.0s, very important, very great achievement. But there's a stack about that big every year of people that have got 4.0s. And it's important to bring something else to the table as well, because you're going to be part of a team. It's not just you. And so you want to be able to fit into the team and it can be passion. That's always good. You, You know, those two things are important. Uh, but to have some different angle for yourself, it could be sports, it could be music, it could just have a different, you know, don't be so one-sided that you only think about uh, the scientific things. Start to live your own life and be, you don't want everything out of a book because, you know, have got lots of books. Uh, you would think if you walk into a, uh, you know, look at books, you think everything's been done, but mm, not even close. So you have to dream. There you go. Uh, it's like uh, learn to dream and live inside your dreams. Yeah, all that, all that good stuff. Don't get anxious. You know, just get take that energy and move forward with it. Definitely good stuff. Definitely good stuff. Um, I think Jen had um, wanted to talk about World Ocean Day with you a little bit. So sure. Yeah. So the advice you just gave the students um, and really the teachers watching too, because I think they needed to hear some of that. Um, definitely, I know. I as an educator, I it resonated with me too. Um, But the theme this year for World Ocean Day is one ocean, one climate, one future together. And I think a lot of what you just talked about really hits on that theme. Um, So just to wrap this up, you know, the, we talked about the ocean, you touched on the climate. So this one future together piece, what are things that the students watching or really just anyone watching um, can really think about moving forward from today? Yeah. I mean, if you mean one future together, the oceans and climate, they're linked like that. 
you know, because the oceans impact the climate, drives rain where it rains, where it doesn't rain. Climate's about two things, precipitation and temperature, those two things. And on Earth, oceans play a big role in that. Most of the heat on Earth is moved around by the ocean and given up by the ocean. And uh, where it rains and doesn't rain, where it's dry and not dry, oceans control most of that, too. It's not as simple as that, but they do. Uh, on the other side of it, one one future together, all humanity, you know, we, we are linked by the atmosphere and by the oceans. We share those two things. I'm on Cape Cod uh, here on the eastern part of the North America, and we can't eat fish in our ponds right outside my home here that way. Uh, because I'm told that it's full of mercury. Where did the mercury come from? They think Chinese coal plants, way over there. And so it just goes to show you that how tightly we're linked. Uh, and we do have to start learning to pull together. We really do. I mean, at some point, you have to start thinking like a planet. You, you got to. I mean, because it doesn't help to have uh, what we call a developed world and a non-developed. We got to figure this out. And we can. you can do it. You know, our lives depend on it and our future of the planet. Uh, depends on us being able to figure out our future together. And it goes back to what Madeleine Elbright told me. It's not just about tolerate. It's about accepting. And to, to be able, you have to accept where other, you know, it doesn't mean no good to walk into a refugee camp and say, stop using plastic bottles you know, and stuff like that, because they're trying to live till tomorrow. And, you know, so we have to figure out all, it's not just about the knowledge. It's about making it useful information. If science data, useful information. About teachers, teachers to me are the portal to all this stuff. Yes, you have the power of the internet and all that. That's great. You should get on there and play and find out stuff. Uh, but teachers become that entry into that world. And, you know, one of the things there, I've always said this, still feel that way, is let the teachers teach. You know, stop giving them this cookbook and saying everything, you know, it's all right here. Let them teach. Because other than that, otherwise... You're taking away the one thing that you can infect people with, which is passion for what you do. And so uh, I got it all figured out, by the way. <laughs> no, I don't have it all figured out. Uh, again, I think the future is bright if we get our act together. And we need to understand the planet's been changing. I worry that we get, you know, I used to be an analyst for CNN. I guess I still am. And we have a tendency to want headlines. We love headlines. And the more headline it is, the you know, this smashed that, this blew up that. And uh, um, it's often not like that. And you know, I think that sometimes we have to realize that it's just the small things sometimes are the, uh, are the uh, most important things. And, uh, you know, I think that I worry about some of these gimmicky things. Like, yeah, I see T-shirts that say, stop climate change. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, uh, where are we going to stop that? You know, with seasons, you want to stop seasons? You want to stop day and night? That's a climate change. Uh, I know what they mean. I got it. It's like there used to be shirts that say stop plate tectonics, meaning we want the earth, the continents to stop moving and earthquakes to stop and volcanoes. Uh, but, but the climate's been changing for 4 billion years. What we want to stop is human impact on climate because we can't predict what's next. And it's, so far, it's not been good. It comes down to two things, pollution, polluting the air, polluting the water. It's still those things. And right at the core of it is humanity. So I worry sometimes we grab onto the buzzy things, buzzwords, when the important stuff is maybe not so buzzy, but it's stop polluting. And we shouldn't put any more in the atmosphere than we absolutely need to. We shouldn't put any more in the water than we absolutely need to. That's a great place to start. But 